On the 30th of January 1649, on a cold winter's afternoon, King Charles I made his way through the banqueting house to a scaffold that had been created next to a window. It was described as the saddest sight England ever saw, with the King facing his execution at the hands of Parliament and the people. Sentenced to death for treason against his population for causing the English Civil War, Charles was to be executed using the commoner's axe, showing the disdain that Parliament had for him. In one swift and clean blow, the King of England was beheaded in front of a large crowd. But who was the man who executed King Charles? It was claimed for a long time that an executioner could not be found. However, today we look at the possible man who took the life of the King, paid by Parliament to perform the bloody job. Remember to support our channel, please make sure to subscribe. The identity of the executioner of Charles I and also the man who assisted him were never told to the English public. The large crowd that gathered outside the banqueting house never saw who the executioner was as he was wearing a disguise. It was very difficult to find someone willing to take the head of the king. Kings at the time were considered appointed by God and were sent to rule from a higher power. The executioner and his assistant were hidden behind a face mask and also a wig, with them making a hasty retreat after the execution. There are a few things we can learn about the person who took the king's head from how he performed the job. Charles before his death was concerned with how the job would be performed and he was noted to have tucked his long hair into a nightcap to ensure that his hair did not get caught in the axe which would possibly have prevented the head being taken off in one swift blow. The biggest fear was that the executioner would perform their job poorly and thus it would take more than one agonising swing to execute the condemned man. The fact the executioner only took one blow to take off Charles's head points to the fact that he was an experienced axeman. He did not however cry out the customary behold the head of a traitor after the execution. This is possibly for a few reasons. Firstly he may have worried that his voice could have given away his identity and therefore he could have been a target for royalists. Also he may have been inexperienced or simply may have just wanted to perform the job as quickly as possible and then exit the area as quickly as possible too. The identity of the man who executed the king was under intense speculation and there are several people whose name has cropped up over time. It was Colonel John Hewson, a soldier of the new model army and a man who signed the death warrant of the king who was tasked with finding the king's executioner. It was said that he offered the job to around 40 soldiers and he even offered to pay them £100 and tempted them with the prize of quick promotions in the army. However, no one came forward. One man who is rumoured to have been the executioner is a soldier named William Hewlett. Hewlett was promoted shortly after in a more prominent position. However, he was not noted to have been there on the day of the king's execution. He said he had been in prison that day after he actually rejected the job to kill the king, but he was tried as the executioner after the restoration and was sentenced to death, but this was overturned as other evidence did turn up. However, the most common belief is that the man who executed Charles I was a man who was a very experienced one, especially in London, performing executions. Richard Brandon is the man mostly believed to have executed the king, and he was a man who inherited his job from his father. He was born in London, and his father became an executioner in 1611, and in a sick twist of events, it was suggested that Brandon prepared for his later career by earlier killing cats and dogs as a child. As his father got older, Richard Brandon continued to work alongside him and ended up succeeding him as the executioner. He himself saw time in prison after being imprisoned at Newgate for bigamy and he was seen as a common hangman of London. He carried out a number of notable executions during the English Civil War, for example the execution of the King's advisor, Thomas Wentworth, the first Earl of Stafford. He even executed the Archbishop of Canterbury and he's often linked to the execution of Charles himself. He was a man who prided himself in his skill with his axe. The identity of the executioner was not known, 
and some even said that Cromwell himself was the man behind the mask with the axe. However, the expert nature of the job points towards a skilled man like Brandon, and it was said that he was paid £30 after the execution. Interestingly, he was also the man who executed other high-profile royalists at the behest of Parliament, and he had no problem executing political criminals. He did, though, deny that he had executed the king up until his dying day. Apparently, at his funeral, crowds gathered, shouting hang him, and to bury him in a dunghill, with the Londoners actually believing him to have been the executioner that took the king's head. Shortly after Brandon's death, three leaflets were published that pointed towards Richard Brandon being the king's headsman. It was claimed that a deathbed confession was obtained, and that following the execution he returned home around 6 o'clock that evening. Rumours about the executioner's assistant turned to a man named George Joyce, who seized the king and brought him to Newmarket during the Civil War. It's believed he had Cromwell's support, at a dinner party attended by a number of parliamentarians, discussion was heard that debated Charles' execution. It was claimed that the common hangman, as in Brandon, was in fact the axeman, and also it was claimed that Lieutenant Colonel Joyce was the assistant, with only Ireton and Cromwell knowing his true identity. Joyce was sought during the restoration, and would have obviously been executed in the regicides ordered by Charles II, but Joyce fled the country with his family. This could, in a sense, indicate his guilt. There were other rumours about the men who were allegedly the executioner, but most historians accept that Richard Brandon was the man who did perform the bloody job. The reaction after the king's head had come off was rather shocking, with huge groans coming from the crowd. Some believe they had executed a man who was actually sent by God to rule and who was given a divine right to rule England, and others rushed forward to dip their handkerchiefs in the blood of the king. Apparently the king's head was dropped into the crowd, and that the crowd also began to cut off locks of the king's hair. It was an event that changed the face of English history forever, and it's one which is one of the most shocking executions of all time. It's no wonder that the executioner to such a brutal event wanted extreme anonymity and to never be found. Once again, thanks for watching. To support our channel, please make sure to subscribe. And once again, thank you so much for watching.